Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chantal, and today I think I have cracked the code on the most aesthetic and productive iPad home screen. <laughs> video I'm going to show you my favorite apps, my favorite little tips and tricks, how to set up shortcuts, my favorite widgets, lots and lots of information. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you a tour, take you inside my iPad and give you a tour of the functionality and what I have going on in there. And then I will break it out into how to do it yourself. You can check the bottom for chapters if you need to go back to any part and look for a particular app, for a widget, for a tutorial, it'll be down below. If you find this video helpful, please let me know down below this video took me a long time to make and I hope you enjoy it one thing about me I do not set up my iPad home screen seasonally I'm a systems kind of girl so I spend a lot of time figuring something out on the front end I do it and then I keep it that way for a long time I liked my last iPad home screen as well and I had that for well over a year so I expect that I'll have this for a long time and I think putting in the work on the front end makes the functionality of the iPad very very useful so if you're interested in in seeing what my iPad home screen looks like. Stay tuned and I'll catch you inside my iPad. Okay, so this is my lock screen. If I open it up, it'll open up. This is my first home screen. I have a few pages here. You can see them down below. So up here I have a big widget. That's my vision board. And then I have another little photo widget here. On the side here, I've got an animated widget. I can show you how to do that as well. And if I slide through them, this is a smart stack. So I've got the weather and I've also got the Spotify app here as well. This is the Readwise widget. So it cycles through all of my Kindle highlights so I can see them. This is the Google Calendar widget. Here I have a Reminders widget. This one's cool because it is interactive. So most of these kind of widgets, if I click on them, it opens up the app and it's big you know, full screen app version in order to use it. But these interactive ones, if I click on one of my reminders, it actually counts it down for me, which is pretty cool. Over here, I have Freeform, which is another one of the apps I use the most. Then I've got GoodNotes. This is day one. You might notice that it's a little bit different than the normal day one app cover. And that's because I just made a different app cover for it and made a shortcut so that it would match my home screen a little bit better. I can show you how to do that as well. Over here, this is my favorite part. I have my focuses set up. So I've got a reading focus, a scripting focus, a design and editing focus, and my home focus, which is this one. And I can click on these and it'll jump to those focuses and those screens that go with that focus. I'll show you that in a second. Over here, I have a shortcut directly to my planner. And here I have a shortcut that goes directly to my GoodNotes reading journal. Okay, so these are my most used apps. They're on my front page, but I wanted to show you my focuses. So if I click on my reading focus here, it automatically opens up the reading page that I have set up. So I have a big widget here with my book rating system for Goodreads. I've got another animated widget here. I've got my Spotify widget. I have Goodreads, Kindle, Hoopla, Audible. This is the Kindle widget with the book that I'm currently reading on it. I have Libby and another direct link to my reading journal here. And then on the side, I have a big reminders widget and I'm using a reminders list as my TBR and I can check off books as I go. And I also can see all of the books that I have on my list here as well. If I wanted to go back to my home screen, of course I could go back to my lock screen and switch focuses that way or I'm gonna drag in my little sidebar. I customize this as well to have that same little focus widget with those four shortcuts and I can click on my home focus and it will take me back into my home focus so I can use all of the sheets again. The next one here I have my design and editing focus. If I click on that, it'll show me my design and editing Focus. I have a different background on here as you can see. I've got Pinterest, a YouTube widget. This is another photo widget, my same animated widget that I love so much. 
Here I have a widget that shows me my battery life for my pen and my iPad. And if I have my headphones connected, it shows that as well. Then I've got my photos, Pinterest, Final Cut, Adobe Fresco. I have the weather widget here that shows me the time of the sunset so I can plan when I'm filming. Then I've got Illustrator, Lightroom, Procreate, Sell on Etsy, Shopify, GoodNotes, and Freeform. So another way that I can flip through my focuses are using the lock screen. So I'm gonna click down on my lock screen and I can slide through here and I'll, it'll show you my scripting page, my entertainment focus, my design and editing focus, my reading focus, and my home focus. And I have a couple other ones over here as well. So I'm gonna show you my scripting focus really quick. So if I slide and open this up, this opens up directly to my scripting focus. So the first thing I have is a widget. This is a notes widget and it opens directly to my TikTok and Instagram scripts folder. Underneath I have a widget, the same widget, but this one goes to my YouTube scripts folder. Up here is Pinterest again. And then I've got my Spotify widget again that I love so much. And underneath I have my Google Calendar widget. And then over here is another one of my favorite animated widgets. It's like a vinyl with a little image spinning around in there. And then I've got notes and notion. And all of these pages are linked in my home view. So I can see all of them at least in one view and then narrow it down if I'm working on something specific. My last page here is my entertainment page. So I have another big widget here that's animated. I've got YouTube, a little photo widget, and then I've got Hulu, Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, HBO Max, Peacock, Prime Video. This is my favorite game for iPad. It's called Wildflowers. And then down here I have Discovery Plus. And that's my home screen. If you're interested, I'll show you how to do all of these things that I did on mine. I really, really love the way this turned out. It's super, super productive and I love the way that it looks as well. I think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just get rid of everything. To remove apps, all you need to do is long press on your screen. Your apps will wiggle around a little bit and you'll get a little icon in the top corner of every app that you can use to remove that app individually from your screen. You just do that over and over again, just like I'm doing here to remove everything. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add back the apps that I know that I need on this first page. So I'm just swiping over from the right to pull up my app library, and then I'm gonna go ahead, select your app and hold down, and then you'll get a drop down menu and click on add to home screen. So to add those cute photo widgets that you see everyone use, you need to download a widget making app like Widget Smith. That's what I use, it's what a lot of people use. It's really easy and it's a free app too, I'm pretty sure. And if you open it up, this is what it looks like. These are the widgets that I already have made. There are a bunch of options. If you go ahead and click on add a widget, you have options for small, medium, large, and extra large. I like the medium one and the small one the most. They're all cool though. You can use them in different kinds of scenarios. And you have an option to add a ton of different kinds of widgets that the app creates themselves, calendars, graphs, photo collections, things like that. I like to use this just for photos and I'm pretty sure that just using photos is free. You don't have to get the paid version. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna tap on photo here and then hit photo here and I can choose from my photos or choose from my file. And I'm gonna make a couple of these to test out. Add a small widget, go to photo, choose from my photos, and then I can go ahead and add that in and I can change the name so I remember what it is. And then just go ahead and save. And then when you come to your home screen, you can hold down, click on this plus icon in the top left corner and it'll open up all of your widget options for you. You just wanna scroll down to Widget Smith here. Pick the size that you just made. So I made a small one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And then you can tap on that widget, click on the widget drop down menu here, and select the one that you just made. And now you can add that that way. And that is how we're going to add all of 
the photo widgets that we're adding. The other things that I'm gonna add are some widgets that are actually functional. So one I know for sure that I wanna add is the weather app. And you can just hold down on it and edit it to the location you want it to be showing you the weather for, or you can have it set to your own location. One of my favorite widgets to add is Readwise. I have this on my phone as well. It is connected to my Kindle account, so it'll pull up and cycle through all my Kindle highlights. One of my favorite things about this is that it helps you remember the things that you are learning. A lot of the times you read these books and then we don't apply what's going on in our life because we forget about it. It's not top of mind. But if I add it this way, those highlights come up and I'm reminded of all of the things that I learned and I'm more likely to apply it to my life. So it comes in a few different sizes. My favorite one is this first one. Okay, so I definitely don't wanna overdo what I add here, but I think I'm gonna add one more to my home screen here. I think I might make an extra large widget. I wonder what shape this is. Photo, choose from my photos. And what I wanna add is my vision board. Save, and let's name this vision board. I actually have never used the extra large widget, so I'm hoping this works. If not, I'll have to remake this in a smaller size. slide down, grab widget smith, grab my extra large size, and go ahead and choose my vision board. And I love that. So I'm gonna move this up to the top. You're able to kind of move everything around based on what works for you. So I think I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna have my today is the day here. My tasks, this is my Google Calendar connected. This is my Readwise app. I've got the weather here. And then I have got the other apps that I wanna have here as well. I wanted to add a couple more apps to this and it's feeling a little bit full. So what I might do is remove a couple of these and move them to my next screen. Okay, so this is what I have so far. The next thing I wanna add is a shortcut to my reading journal and a shortcut to my plan. I'm gonna go ahead and open GoodNotes. I'm gonna grab my reading journal. I'm gonna to navigate to my cover here and I'm gonna go ahead and export this page using this top button. So export this page and I'm gonna export it as an image and save that image to my device. I'm gonna do the same thing with my planner. Then I'm gonna go into Procreate, and I'm gonna go ahead and open a square. So add, I'm gonna use my square here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use the little wrench tool to insert a photo. I'm gonna grab the reading journal first. Go ahead and center this. I think that's good. I'm gonna duplicate this alpha lock and then fill this in with black so I can create a little natural shadow. Turn off my alpha lock, come over here and click on Gaussian blur and then I can kind of go like this and it looks like it's popping off the page. Then I'm going to select the main color of the book here and then make that my background color. And I like how that turned out, so I'm gonna go ahead, press the share button and save that to a PNG. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing for my planner. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the wrench tool at the top and then share. And I always save as a PNG image. You could use JPEG, whatever image you want. 
and then I'm just going to save it to my device. Okay, so now I'm gonna add shortcuts to my planner and to my reading journal. We just made those two thumbnails that are in the square size. You can make them look like whatever you want to, but I like to make them little mini screenshots of the cover that I'm using. Now I'm gonna open up the shortcuts app. Make sure you use the shortcuts app that looks like this. You don't need to use a third party app. The one that's from Apple works great and it's free. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. You wanna click on the plus icon here and then you search for apps and actions and I'm gonna put in good notes and then it'll give you some options to open up some of your recently used documents and I have my planner here so that's what I'm gonna click on and then up at the top there's a little arrow besides the name in the top bar if you click on that you can open up this little drop down menu and change the name of the shortcut, rename the icon, but what you wanna do is add to home screen. So you're gonna get a little window that looks like this. Here you can change the name. One word names I find work the best for this purpose because it takes out all of your spaces if you add two words anyway. So I'm just gonna say planner and then I can tap on the little gray icon here and choose a photo. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose that little square thumbnail that we made, press use and then go ahead and add. And now I have my planner up on my home screen and if I click on that, it's gonna open up my planner. I'm gonna do the same thing for my reading journal. Shortcuts, add, search for good notes. So now that I have my reading journal selected, I can click on that downward facing arrow, click on add to home screen. I'm gonna change this to reading journal. It's gonna be a long name, so it'll probably get rid of that space, but I'm okay with that. Click on the icon here, choose a photo, and then click on my reading journal thumbnail. Go ahead and click on use and add. And now I have my reading journal there and it seemed to work out with the two words. So two words seems to work well. With the planner, I had like 2024 Sunday Star Planner and it squished all of it together so I couldn't read it, but two words seems to work out. So I have my planner here and I have my reading journal and they open from my home screen and I love the way this is looking. So I think this is a good time for me to go ahead and take a screenshot. So I'm going to use the left corner, take a screenshot, done, save that to my photos. And now I'm gonna open up Procreate, add a new canvas in the screen size. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert the photo of my home screen so far. And this is just gonna give me an idea of where all of my apps are so I know what space I have to doodle if I want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that layer with two fingers and remove the opacity so it doesn't interfere with my drawing. And then I'm gonna grab a new layer and use this little corner to write in some, or draw in some little designs. And once I save that, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that as my wallpaper. favorite interactive widgets is the reminders widget. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you. If I click on that, you've got some options. I'm gonna pick the smallest one, add that. And I just have one reminder left for today. And if I were to click on that, it would get rid of it for me and count down my reminders. The other thing I'm gonna do, since I had to get rid of that weather app, is I'm going to add it back in the small size. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stack these. And when you stack widgets on top of each other, they're called smart stacks and you can flip between them. You can add more than two. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another one. 
Now I wanted really quick to talk to you about a couple of my favorite widgets. They're the animated widgets. These are the ones I get asked the most questions about and they have truly no functionality except for aesthetics, but I think that's worth it sometimes. So the two that I like to recommend are MD Clock. Whenever you see that like little beating heart animated emoji or the little kissing face emoji that moves on my screen, that's the one. The other one I really like is the High app. It's high with three eyes and that one has the little spinny vinyl. It also has like little retro TVs and things. Those are the two animated widget apps that I recommend. If you have any that I haven't used before, let me know down below because I'm always interested in testing out new animated widgets. I'm going to open up MD Clock. It has my favorite 8-bit emoji that moves. It's like an animated widget, which I love. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then I'm gonna stack that on top. And now that's covering up my functional widgets while keeping with the vibes that I'm trying to cultivate on the rest of this page. And I'm pretty happy with how this looks so far. The other thing I wanna show you how to do really quick is add app covers. So here I have day one and it is in the colors that I prefer, but this is what the original app icon looks like. To make this, I'm gonna use shortcuts very similarly to what I did for the shortcuts to my planner and reading journal, but even easier. So I'm just gonna remove this from my home screen and I'm gonna remove the bookmark that I made as well, just so I can show you how to do it yourself. So what you're gonna need is an image to make your app cover. I made mine myself, but you can find these kinds of really cute app covers in packs on Etsy or, you know, kind of wherever you wanna find them. I made mine in Procreate because this was a pretty simple image. So I just did this, turned it into colors that I like. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a PNG directly to my device. Once you have that saved to your device, all you wanna do is open up shortcuts. Okay, so this is a slightly different situation once you get into shortcuts. So go ahead and click on the plus button and then you're gonna look for open app. And where it says app here, go ahead and tap on that and look for your app. There we go. And then again, hit on that little down arrow on that top bar, go ahead and click add to home screen. And here I'm gonna rename this day one and then tap on that photo, choose my photo, select the photo that I just saved for this purpose, go ahead and press use and add. And now you can just fold that down and move it just like you would any app and it will open directly to your app just like it would have if you were using the original picture. So the next thing I'm gonna do is link all of my different pages to focuses. You do not have to do this. It's just something that I like to do. So this is my home screen. I have themed out the next page for more of my work things. So video editing and designing things are here. On the next page, I have everything that I use to read and to rate books. The next thing I have here is everything that I use to script out videos. The next one I have here, this is the last one, is just everything that I use to stream. So if I'm watching TV with my iPad, this is the page that I would go to. So to set that up, all you need to do is go to your lock screen, hold down on your lock screen, and you will be able to pick different lock screens and set up focuses. So I have my reading, lock screen set here. And if I click on that, it'll automatically take me to my reading homepage and it won't switch between the other ones unless I go back over and switch back to my normal focus. So if you're trying to focus, <laughs> it's a great way to set up your iPad. So I'm gonna go to my lock screen and then I just need to press and hold and it will open up an option here to customize. So I'm gonna slide over. I already have my reading one set up, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a new option here. Go to my photos. You can choose any background you want. I have a couple saved here that I made myself, so I think I'm gonna use this. You can add side widgets here if you'd like to. I think I might do my calendar. 
Let's do my animated heart, I love that one. My pencil battery and weather. And that's good for me for now. You can also go ahead and change the font and color of your time up here. I'm just gonna thicken this out and maybe choose a different font. You can also change the color. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that and I'm gonna set it as a wallpaper pair. And then down here, I have an option to click focus. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then you wanna slide down and click on focus settings down here at the bottom. Once you click on that, it'll open up your focus settings obviously and you can click on this little plus button in the top right corner and then select custom now i'm going to name this design and edit and i'm going to go ahead and change the color here i'm going to do red and i'm going to do this little pen and then I can customize my focus. So here you can choose the people that you want notifications from and the apps that you want notifications from. And then down here I can choose my lock screen. So I'm going to go down and pick that one that we just added, select done. And then I'm going to choose the home screen page that it will open. So it's the second page and I'm going to go ahead and select done for that as well. And now when I have my page locked, I can go ahead and hold down, slide over to my design and edit focus. And when I open that, it opens directly to my design and edit page. So now I'm gonna show you the most complex part of this whole thing. I've never done this on one of my setups before. I really enjoy it. You don't have to do something like this, but if you wanna know how I made that little folder with the four little shortcuts that could jump between my reading focus and my design and edit focus and my normal home focus, this is how you do it. So we're gonna hop into the shortcut section here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the add button. Then I'm gonna open up scripting, scroll down, until I see where it says set focus. Then you wanna tap on where it says do not disturb and select the focus that you're working on and turn off off and it'll change it to on until turned off. Now you're gonna go ahead and choose your icon. I'm gonna select a color here and you've got a lot of options here in the icons that you don't have when you were setting it up originally. So I'm gonna choose that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on that down button again and change the name of this. It's really helpful to name these particular shortcuts because you're gonna group them together later. Now you're gonna keep doing that for each focus that you're working on. It works best to do these in like two, four, or six, and you'll see why in a second. Then I'm gonna go to the folder section here and I'm gonna add a new folder. I can select an icon for this folder I'm gonna pick this cute little art. You can choose whatever you want though and go ahead and name it and then go ahead and press add. Now you have a little folder and you're gonna drag all of those focuses that you just set up into that focus shortcut folder. Now I'm gonna hold down on my home screen, click on add and I'm gonna scroll down to where it says shortcuts in my widget section here. Now I can slide over and I'm gonna slide over until I have the four shortcuts folder option and add that as a widget. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that and I can edit that widget and go ahead and select the folder I just made. And now it's gonna display all of my focus shortcuts and I can go ahead and tap on those to click between my focuses. And that's everything that you're gonna need to set up the most productive and aesthetic iPad home screen you've ever seen. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It took me forever to make and set up all of these little tutorials. If it was helpful, please let me know down below. And if you wanna share your lock screen with me, I love to see them. I am Paper and Roses over on Instagram and you can send them to me over there. I'd be so excited to see them. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thank you.